Hello, persona. Yeah. Hello, my name is Teresita Blanco, the Earth Sister. And today we're reading Saturn Astro Marduk. We are in chapter 14, part 1. And it's called Arasa. That day, with the wedding day drawing so close, Bersame was spending most of his time with his unwilling bride. While dozing up, while dozing up, I started preparing for my escape. I contacted the cannon and told him about my situation. He was on the other side of the world. If he traveled by human speed, it would take him five months to save me. I told him that I only had two more days to live. It's, poss it's possible he could uh, he should make it there in five days. He worried that if he if he can't hurry too quickly, then Bersame would notice his approach. After working out some gimmicks, we figured that he should travel four days, four days as a camera, and once he drew close to Veragueron, he would travel he would travel disguised as a human. It should take him. Uh, it should take him uh, roughly uh, less than a week for them to say to say, but depending on if Bertram was in the capital or not. With everything prepared, all we needed was an excuse to get Bertram out of the out of the city. One one day, Siva Siva no asked Bertram Bertram to f to go fetch him his his staff. If he brought it back, then he would be, then he would love them forever. Bersame knew it was a lie. To convince him, Sivano said, "Look, I know a recipe for a love potion. If you bring it, I should drink it and fall instantly in love with you." This hero was not a lie. Sivano didn't know how to make a love potion. While Bersame went on his journey, he ordered Belladonna to prepare the love potion for his wedding night. Before Bertame left, he gave, my, he gave me my correspondence. That day there was but a single letter. It had been written by my brother. It read, Mother is dying. Come home soon. At that moment, Bertame's ominous warning came to my mind. I will give you a reason to fear me. This news left me per perturbed. In the end, prudence overcame my emotions. On the seventh day, Kano's bat flew to the window. This magical talking bat greatly amused Sivan, who had never seen anything like it. We got some firewood, and together we torched Libra's tower. I figured that I would leave it again in a place of glory. I was planning on having my final battle with Bersame soon. From the tower, I took my fighting gear, and Sivan abandoned his books. He said he didn't need them anymore, now that he had discovered a new, a new way of acquiring magic. By traveling the cave of creation through meditation. The only thing he took with him were his old robes. He had managed to stitch them throughout, throughout his captivity. We rode on Cano's back. The burning tower smoke served as cover. Its fumes extended over the mountains and fell upon the city. The smoke kept everyone from seeing as things flying over them. Cannon landed on the bridge of Veragerum. He said to us, Get off. When we got off, Cannon assumed his human form. Oh, yeah, the time? Uh, it's asking him in five minutes. Well, assume his human Once he did, Ivan came out from, from below the bridge. He said, Smiling, do you think we'll let you escape so easily? Laughing, I said, I want to dream of it. The twins showed their face and added, you're not leaving here without us. The man too joined and said, I, I probably don't mind entire clan, but I'm with you, my dog. Bruno leading the horses said, like I told you before, I will fight Bertame if you tell me to. Juliet also showed her face and timidly she said, I will have to pay you back for all those times you saved me during the car chariot training. Seeing all of my friends here brought tears to my eyes. I turned around so they would not see their commander getting emotional. Silvano did see my tears. This made him gay. So, so he asked me, what now? Now we go home. Now we go home. Silvano, you're sticking with me for now. While Bersame breathes, you will not know peace. When I slay Bersame, you may go about the world as you please. I responded. Together in full speed, we rode to my grandmother's citadel. At a rapid pace, we arrived at my, whole, at my old home uh, my, after a 
three days journey. Once I was before the gate, I yelled at the guard. I yelled at the guards. It is time I do. Open the gate. I came to see my mother. The guards recognized my voice. They swung the gates open and allowed me to enter within. On horseback, I rode across the garden. I dismounted when I was before the manor. Leo and Cleo were waiting for me before the portal. When I entered the room, Leo, Leo jumped at my neck. While sobbing and kissing me, he said, You're here. You're finally here. Cleo too hugged my legs and sobbed. She was too overcome with emotions to say anything. I carried my sister in my arms and I went to my mother's room. Leo followed close behind, hiding under my cape. My companions waited in the living room to hear any news. As I went forward, I noticed that Steven was walking close behind. In, he said to me, Fear. He said to me, fear not, her body is still warm with my new powers, I should be able to revive her. As I got closer, I felt a chill down my spine. The air had the faint stench of death. I could feel that as the deep world's god of death was nearby. Sivano too felt his presence. When I reached her mother's room, I saw my grandmother waiting outside. She was wearing a simple gray dress. It was tradition in her land that whenever somebody died, their family would sport the worst attire they could find. Her long white hair was held back with a black ribbon. She wore no jewelry. This was a stark contrast from the attire she wore the first time I met her. There were no tears in her eyes. Her face was a stony mass of silence. Seeing me with the children made a single tear fall from her cheek. She quickly dried it. She came to me and she took Cleo from my hands. With her free hand, she fetched Leo from beneath my cape. In a low, pain whisper, she said to me, If only you had come sooner. She departed with her grandchildren. When I opened the door, I saw that a white sheet covered my mother. Her nurse was still watching over her body. When she saw me, she said, Two weeks ago, your mother was struck by a strange illness. I thought it was a summer cold. She got worse and worse as the day passed by. In the last three days, she went unconscious altogether. Slowly, her body lost heat and she breathed less often. A few hours ago, her heart stopped. Time? Yeah, seven minutes. I went towards the maid and I patted her shoulder, smiling. I said, "You have done enough for my poor mother. Let us be a, let me let us be alone with her." She looked a bit hesitant at the maid, at the maid, but then she departed. I sat by my mother's side and I removed the bed sheet from her face. Her face was indeed as pale as a corpse. I kissed her forehead and I kneeled beside her bed. Sivano too sat beside her. Shyly he whispered, Do you want me to try to revive her? I placed my hands on my face and I wept. I wept for her in the way that I had never wept for anyone. When I was done I said, Why bother? Her spirit has departed. If you revive her she will be nothing but a shell. Sivano frowned at my statement and he said, That is odd. Raising my face, I asked, How so? According to the nurse, your mother died five hours ago. He said this even more pensive. He, he asked, May I examine her? I do not see their harm. With my permission, Sivano looked through her. While he looked, in her, he looked into her eyes and he sniffed a little and he added, That is very odd indeed. Don't keep me in suspense, Sivano, I barked back. I smell on her small traces of magic. I still sniff in the place he pointed. Do you know why we hold funerals, my duke? Sivano asked suddenly. It is so that the death may take us. Uh, it is so that death may take us to our final resting place. The moment I said this, I realized what had occurred. That the ambassador was at it again. Seeing my expression, he added, "Yes, her soul is gone because somebody summoned the god of death, Arasa." Have you ever revived someone that, what, that has been killed by a death spell? I asked hopefully. Smiling, he said, yes, many times. Arasa is not too particular about keeping souls. From other gods, he's the most passive. With a simple necromancy, I should be able to get her soul back in one piece. Now help me close the curtains. Necromancy works better in the darkness. Is that? Uh, five minutes. I closed the curtains and I locked the door behind me. I left a sign that read, Do not disturb, necromancy at work. Sivano lit a candle and he placed it in the center of the room. In the corner of the room there was a plant. He took some earth from the plant and made a circle using dirt. 
As he did, he said, Normally I want to need such elaborate preparations. Since your mother's soul is gone, we will have to have an audience with death in his domain. He spoke the words of magic and the darkness became thicker. Slowly the temperature began to decrease. A cold wind swept across the room. Simono sat down before the candle and he begged me to do the same. In a long whisper he said, Stare blankly into the candle, do not dare to blink. While I stared at the candle, I felt my soul depart in my body. I could see myself sitting before the candle. Suddenly my spirit was caught between two arms. My truth will breathe my my truth bring my spirit into his body. Minutes later, Sivano's spirit left his own body. Smiling, he said, So that is what your spirit looks like. Shaking my head, I said, Not really. I am an Arya master. It is an easy task for my true form to invade these deathly realms. I stand before you in both body and spirit. You have, have got to show me how you did that trick, he exclaimed. Later, for now, I need you to help me find my mother. Send this, I beg him to walk before me. Before we left, I tied my blue fade string around my body. The realms of death were nothing but shadow. Once we got outside the candlelight, I could see nor hear anything. As my guide, Sivan led me by the hand. From time to time, I could hear strange whispers. As others, I could hear somebody crying in the distance. As I, we went on, I asked Sivan, are we there yet? No, he answered. A few, a few hours and I used to turn loosely, I felt something grab my ankle. I kicked the darkness and felt nothing. Behind my ear, I heard someone giggling. Seconds later, I felt someone blow into my ear. Again, I, I, sla I flapped my free hand in the darkness. Anger, I said, are we there yet? No, he snapped. With a yank, I drew him towards me. His body felt warm beneath, my, beneath his spirit roof. I know he yelled. Don't cling so closely. Sorry, it's a force of habit, I said before giving him more space. The more we walk, the more putrid the smell became. Time? Uh, two minutes, 30 seconds. The strange noise and sensations increased by the minute. I was forced to slow down because something was pulling on my cape. For a while, I pretended not to notice. Suddenly, I made a yanking motion and I felt, so, felt someone in the darkness. With my free hand, I held on to the press and yelling, I said to Sivano, I think I caught something. The shade that I had caught felt smaller than me. Sivano too stopped and, stopped and he felt around the darkness. Eventually he found what I had caught a hold of. Feeling his face, he said, It is a person. It is strange. He feels cold, much colder than even the most ancient of spirits. In an epic fashion, I said, Speak, O oh, wonder in the darkness. For what purpose have you visited this darkly realm? The dark figure only said, My Duke. The way he said my name felt as if he had spoken into my mind. Our conversation was interrupted by Sivano, who asked, Who the hell are you talking to? This time, Shalom addressed both Sivano and me. With his usual cold politeness, Shalom said, Forgive me. I was not aware there was somebody else with you. In a fast tone, I said, What brings you here, my brother? As a necromancer, I practically I visit this realm quite often, he said. Time? One minute, ten seconds. In the darkness, I felt hands reaching for my face. My brother's gentle hands lowered my face to his, and he kissed both my eyes. When I opened them, I was able to see the, in the realm of death. The ground below me was covered with flowers of violet and blue colors. Most of them were gold, venus, lavender, lilies, Afodelus, Campanellas, Carnations, and Aguilias. The sky was relatively clear. Was relatively clear. The sun and the moon and the sky both were visible. However, none shed any light in these deathly realms. Alright, I think we're good. Bye bye.